give us your poor, your tired, and your federal money. The leaders of three sanctuary cities are begging President Biden to shower them with some cold, hard, taxpayer-funded cash as they wind their hearts out over the big, bad Texas governor busing illegals to their doorsteps. We cannot continue to do the federal government's job. The federal government must take responsibility and lead on this humanitarian crisis instead of leaving it for cities and localities to handle. We need the federal government to lean in and provide more financial assistance. All of our cities have reached a point where we are either close to capacity we're nearly out of room. We need more federal support uh, to be able to manage this amount of inflow. Uh, it will crush city budgets around the country. As we know, we're looking at about $160 million of potential costs going to next year's budget. That's almost 10% of our entire city budget. Ooh, you do know the definition of sanctuary, don't you? But maybe they are better off not seeking help from Team Biden. That's because this White House is acting like a bunch of nincompoops on the issue. Secretaries Blinken and Mayorkas coming back from a meeting with Mexico's president empty-handed with no big border deal to announce. Blinken did come up with a strange new term for the crisis, irregular migration. <laughs> and Mayorkas thought the meeting was Productive, mm, that's a fun word. Doesn't apply here. But a uh, border state Democrat doesn't think productive is cutting it. Watch. The border has been ignored. They're listening too much to the immigration activists. The White House and a lot of members of Congress and the Senate listen to the immigration advocates. But who's listening to the border communities? We're losing Democrats. They feel that the Democratic Party, that the president is not doing enough well, clearly that message is not breaking through to Democrats. So the party is just praying that voters live under a rock. Take a look at the immigration slash border security. It was just 11 percent in August. Look where it's hopped to now. 19 percent. So it's closing in on the economy. The most Google searches for migrants by state. Look at all these states, Phil. They're all blue states. Illinois is one. New York is two. Massachusetts is three. New Jersey is four. Colorado is five. What? You mean people actually care about immigration, Jimmy? Imagine. Uh, first of all, good to see everybody and bear with me. You are the first sober people I've spoken to. <laughs> this is going to be what a doozy. <laughs> yeah, your Uncle Jimmy. Uh, wish him luck. Well, this is essentially what happened. Joe Biden took the border and turned it into the college bar that doesn't check ID. Do you remember that bar in college where once the word got out, you were going to get in no matter what? Okay, they incentivized this. But the idea that they went down there with no deal and had the, I guess, chutzpah. Is that a fair word? Chutzpah. I, uh, I'm trying not to say balls on TV. Bear with me. I apologize. But the idea that they came back and said that, okay, it's, it was productive. Okay, this is a now problem. We just broke a record for fentanyl poisoning deaths. People are dying. Mm. Infrastructure is overwhelmed in inner cities. The idea that you call it, be like, it was productive, okay? It's such an insult and an indifference to the people being harmed by this. And this is the only point I want to make up, okay, bring up, is that the Democrats, and everyone should remember this, when the election rolls around and they start telling you, no, no, we're the party of struggling minorities in inner cities, okay? They are crushing struggling minorities in inner cities right now by overwhelming schools, obviously, and infrastructure and facilities. And it is the biggest screw you to the people they purport to care about the most. So if I am a little hopped up, it's not just the tequila sodas. All right, but we'll be serving plenty of those in your white coffee mug throughout the show. <laughs> I was promised. <laughs> Mark my word. Um, but Jimmy brings up a point that you sort of discussed yesterday, and that is... You know, these mayors are saying we only have so many resources. Yeah. So what are they supposed to do if, if they have declared themselves sanctuary cities? So they put the bright neon open sign at the, at the front door, and now people are going in. How do you solve this? Well, I think that you have to let city council meetings, like the one that was shut down in Chicago, where the people wanted to talk about voting to make Chicago not a sanctuary city anymore, you have to let those go through. And you have to hear what the people say. It doesn't mean that the policy is automatically going to be overturned, but you can take that information and you can go to the federal government or you can go to your governors and say, the people do not want this anymore. The people got this in the first place because they did. It is working differently than it used to. You just look at the people who were advocates for sanctuary city policies, chief amongst them, Rudy Giuliani, right, who obviously in a very different state of mind and position in his life, 
was talking about how important it is that people could come out of the shadows and work with law enforcement to talk about what's going on in their communities to make us safer and understood that the people who were coming here we're here for a better life, to work hard. We're paying taxes into accounts just in case the government checked on them, wanted their kids to go to school and to pay it forward, as it were. That is very different to what's going on right now, and it is becoming a quality of life issue. And that's the same thing as the economy, and that's what people vote on. And I always say this, this does not mean that a bunch of Democrats are going to become a bunch of Republicans. That's not this, but it does mean that you have... But it does mean a bunch of New Yorkers are going to become a bunch of Floridians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are going to leave and go places yeah. where maybe they don't advertise themselves no, but, as yeah. sanctuary. But, but, Charlie, are they just trying to get money from the federal government? Oh, yes. Is, is that this play, or are they really trying to shift policies in a more rational direction? Well, I think uh, primarily they're just trying to get money because that's what they do. But the, the, the larger argument is, the, you know, what happens when ideology meets reality. They sit around and they talk about this stuff in ideological terms, and it all sounds nice and rosy. And they also so go even further and tell other people what it is that, that uh, you know, their policy uh, uh, solutions for problems that they're not personally facing. And, of course, you know, the border state governors, border states have been dealing with this for 20 years and have been screaming about it, saying we need to do something about it. And all of these sanctuary city people sit around and say, oh, I've got all the answers. This is what you do. You need to make it. A and then, of course, when that happens, all hell breaks loose and it's a catastrophe. And now we're going to have to dig them out of the ideological hole that they've gotten themselves into. Luckily... Um, I think that, you know, I, I do think that maybe they don't become permanent Republicans, but they will vote. They're, this is a very powerful issue that people do vote on. And uh, when they look around and they see things, that, as you point out, that don't work, whether it's the economy or, you know, getting on an airplane and seeing, you know, the, your tax do dollars paying for illegals to fly around the country, yep. it makes people mad. I, and, because this issue doesn't... It's not necessarily just an illegal immigration issue. It becomes an education issue. Yep. It becomes a sanitation issue. It becomes a public safety issue when you're cutting budgets for education, for example. It becomes a health care issue when Cops. emergency rooms mm -hmm. are completely overrun with people who are not paying to the system or who are using the system. You know, the mayor of Chicago and the mayor of New York City continue to ask Joe Biden to do something about this. They're not doing anything. If you read the readout between the State Department and the president of Mexico that was issued today, it's paragraphs and paragraphs of gobbledygook, <laughs> diplomatic nothingness. But the good news is that they're going to meet again in January, a couple weeks from now, to go over how this issue can be solved. We know how it's solved. There was nothing in that meeting, at least publicly, they put out about any kind of asylum reform, any kind of remain in Mexico uh, policy that can be put into place. That's what's needed here. This actually is not complicated. And these mayors, there are things they can do. They can say... We will not shelter you. We will not give you benefits. We will not allow you to use our, our facilities. You will not be welcome here. But they're not doing that. But they're, they're just asking for more money to manage more people coming into the country. And as Charlie said, they're perfectly fine with this happening in places like Texas and Arizona, yep. but don't want to hold the federal but, government but accountable. But that's the issue, because Texas and Arizona, they cannot absorb so many no. people because they know that the more they overrun the system, the odds are in their favor that they'll be able to get into the country. They won't have court dates for six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to all the layers that are broken because it's not just the cities. It is the federal government. It is diplomacy that has broken down. It's immigration. It's border protection. It's all of it. And it doesn't seem like anyone is really serious about fixing it. And I would throw Republicans in there too like they get really mad about it but we haven't seen any solutions from either side when they get both houses of congress and the presidency no we've had gangs of everything we've had gangs of six we've had gangs of it now we have gangs coming across the border i know jimmy that's what you wanted me to stop say. it in a way um and that's completely correct there's also a kind of memory hole i find on my side of the aisle about who barack obama was when it came to the immigration issue he was known as the deporter yep. in chief and he increased his share of the latino vote there isn't people aren't waiting to see that the border is open that everyone in the world can come in they want a fair system that doesn't mean that people shouldn't be able to claim asylum that is something that is important and is fundamental to the united states but there is there are only votes to be lost by leaving it as it is. Mm -hmm. There are votes to be gained for Democrats, and you see that this alliance of 
the Henry Cuellars of the world mm -hmm. and John Fetterman. And you have Katie Hobbs saying, I'm going to send the yeah. National Guard Listen, down to the border. I, I knew something was up when Eric Adams left the nightclub. Then we were like, wow, right, this is out of control. <laughs> With for a Turkish to, date yeah. or no? For him to <laughs> When he went to and ate a steak, Jim. Yeah. That's when you knew this <laughs> was serious. All right, the pro-Hamas crowd are some serious party poopers blocking traffic at two major airports and scheming to ruin your New Year's Eve plans. Don't you dare, commies. That's next. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.